now that we're moving up into an, uh, into a new level of drawing, um, where you're kind of beginning with intermediate concepts, we need to review a little bit about structural drawing um, or um, analytical drawing, it's also called sometimes. Um, but I like structures because it's, it's simple. So in your basic drawing, you're dealing with, with four forms. You're dealing with the sphere and its projections down. So you're dealing with the sphere. You're dealing with box forms. And how they project into space. And then you deal with cylinders. And you deal with cones. So these are the four, what I call the four basic forms. You can draw a lot of things with this, especially when you start combining them. Um, now the important concepts to remember, um, the probably the main one is um, the draw, the idea of the draw through, or the wireframe. Um, and that that basically means that. Um, we're trying to get away from the old cliche in drawing that you that you basically just you draw what you see, right? We want to draw what you know and what I see. So if I look at this coffee cup I've got in my office, like I know that there's the bottom of the cup, and I mean I can only see this front part of the ellipse, but as I pull the coffee cup upwards, you know this part is obscured by the actual cup, and then on top. I can kind of match that ellipse. I also know that there's a, a central axis. I mean, I can't see a central axis, but I put it in and that allows me to kind of check and measure myself. And then if I put two more axes through and I'll darken these for clarity, then I can really check myself for the accuracy of these forms, right? And that idea of just drawing through one of the basic forms and, and doing this allows us to do several things. One, we can accurately check the symmetry of these four quadrants in an ellipse. Another thing that we can do is if the shadow begins right here, and this is the shadow side of the object, I can determine from this intersection point where the shadow hits the bottom of the ellipse, I can draw a line through the um, central axis point where the horizontal and vertical axes meet, and I can draw a tangent line on either side, and I know exactly where the shadow emanates from this coffee cup, right? So that is a way to logically and perfectly sort of construct this shadow, this cast shadow. And if you don't draw through, you have no idea where this point is, right? Um, so drawing through gives us this opportunity. Um, and you do that with, you know, every object that you come across, and you eventually start to create something, um, to create a repertoire of forms, um, and you kind of develop this instinct to know where the shadow comes out. The problem with not drawing through is if you draw this cylinder like like this, right, and you put a shadow out here, you don't necessarily know where the shadow comes out. So you could put it wrong and the shadow could have nothing to do, not even hit this ellipse anywhere. So this shadow could be more or less arbitrary. And you would basically call that entirely wrong. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is you can kind of determine if there's an open cup, you can determine where the shadow is going to be on the inside of the cup, where it casts the shadow like this way, right? So it's just some, some logical things that you can do. And then when you start stacking forms, like if you have um, uh, two books on top of each other, right? You could draw uh, a box form for the book, right? And if you complete that by drawing the back and bottom, right? And these don't even have to necessarily be perfect for this to work. Then when you stack a book on top of it, right? Say the book's a little bit smaller, you know where that book hits on that form. If you draw it 
from the ground up and you've drawn through. So you can kind of begin to stack up forms and add them. Now this can get really complicated. So what I like to do when I'm stacking things like this, maybe there's another book that runs across this direction and overlaps everything and then goes up. Maybe it's an odd format book or just another kind of boxy squarish object. Then what I can do is use sort of this two-tone idea and then I can bring some front lines up so that my overlap makes a little bit more sense. And this, you know, people do this kind of thing all the time because it's a, it's a quick and easy way to go about drawing forms with overlapping. Right? So this just makes it a little more um, a little more clear when you get into some more complex forms. From what I can judge, there's there's two basic modes uh, that you're gonna that you use to draw forms, um, especially complicated forms. You use like um, additive and subtractive. So an example of an additive form might be like a Coca-Cola bottle, right? Um, it has a very distinctive shape. So if you begin with the sort of central cylinder of the Coke bottle where the logo is and you have a central axis, you might add a cone on the top, add a cone on the bottom, add an ellipse, add another cone for the bottom, and add another small cylinder at the top for the lip, and you get something that you can then kind of bend into you know, your typical Coke bottle form. One of the most recognizable forms, right? And if you're doing your two-tone thing, you can kind of um, go back through and, and clean up the symmetry. One of the things that I like to do when I when I have um, when I use these forms as a basis and I have to make them a little more organic is um, I like to to do what I call like parentheses. So create one curve on this side and then come back on the other side and then create one curve on each side and that way I feel like I can um, follow through a little bit more accurately because the memory of this curve is fresh, um, and I can adapt that more quickly and readily, right? Okay. Um, so that is what we call additive, because I've taken basically um, a cylinder, and then I've stacked a cone, and intersected one that cone through another cone, and then another cone above that, and then I've stacked a cylinder on top of that. So I've added one, two, three, four, five forms together in order to make one Coke bottle, right? The other way to think about it is subtractive, so I can take away from a form. So let's say um, I have a cylinder that's kind of got like, let's say I'm drawing like a lipstick tube, right? So lipstick is basically, the lipstick itself is a cylinder, but it's inside another larger cylinder, right? So this is this will be like a giant lipstick tube that goes off the page. Now when I want to draw the lipstick itself, what I have to do is basically take this and slice off a part of the lipstick to make that make sense, right? So that way I can get an accurate lipstick tube. So like if you're drawing bamboo that a samurai just sliced with a samurai sword, right? I'd have this, this bamboo cylinder, right? And then I'd break it up into a couple of spots, you know, change the contour of it and then slice it, right? So the samurai just came through this direction and sliced. So I'd have a bit of sliced bamboo right here, right? Then I draw the inside of the bamboo because it's hollow. And there I get sliced bamboo. So this is called subtractive. So I might see the sliced bamboo, but I can draw the complete one and then cut it apart. And so this is your plus, this is your minus, right? So these are, those are the basically the, the two working methods that I use to break down forms and make them simple. Because I don't know how to draw a lipstick 
um, lipstick tube, but I know how to draw a cylinder and I know how to sub subtract an ellipse or a section off of that cylinder, right? I don't know how to draw a piece of cut bamboo, but I can draw a, draw a long cylinder, subdivide it, change the contour, and then take a slice off of it. Um, and you could do things with, um, with box forms as well. Like, let's say I had a box form and I want to slice out a cylinder from, from that. So I could draw, I could draw the cylinder into this box form and I could cut out this sort of, this bit right here to kind of create this cut out form. So that's another subtractive method, right? So I could kind of create a little shadow to help that make sense. Right? So that's just kind of a simple way to go about it. And when you think of these forms, um, it always helps to, to hang on to a couple of concepts, right? So when you're drawing with, um, with these dimensional forms, some things can go wrong, just like with any sort of drawing style. So let's talk about what can go wrong. Um, in a box form, what can go wrong is you um, you draw out this box and you only draw the front side. Um, that could be a, that could be considered a mistake because if you want to put the shadow behind it, you don't know where the shadow comes out on this back side, right? This is kind of just a guess as to where this comes out from here. Um, so the correction to that is draw through the forms, right? Draw all of them. Now, one of the things that can happen is that you can draw um, a form in divergent perspective. So if we start with this line at the front, right, we want to make sure that every line that goes back in space will come together eventually, right? These will eventually, if we continue them out, intersect at a certain point. Same thing on the other side, right? Most people understand this concept and they can get that done. Um, what happens a lot of times is that when you draw these lines back, they tend to go up where they won't intersect, right? And so you create the, the top of a box that feels like it's peeling up in space, right? Um, which if you want a box top to peel up in space, do that. But instead, you want them to intersect, so you have to change the angles so that they'll intersect, hopefully at the same point, right? And then if we combine that with drawing through forms, we can then make everything intersect. And we can give the front of the box a little extra line weight so that those construction lines kind of disappear. So what we're checking for basically is wireframe and divergence, right? With cylinders, the biggest thing I see with cylinders is not using the central axis. If you don't have a central axis, it's very hard to judge whether you're right. Beyond that, um, your horizontal axes for your ellipses, right? So what you can do with this is you can measure side to side of the axis these two distances and make sure they're the same. Then you can measure with your ellipse, you can check and make sure that this distance right here is equal to this distance right here. And then you can check whether all four quadrants look similar to each other. The other thing you can do on most cylinders is take this size and just bring it down. So here's your axis you have, and you can make the same size ellipse, and that usually works when you're drawing objects close up. So what we're looking for, mostly this is the axis, right? A lot of people just skip over the axis and don't necessarily use it, and that leads to a lot of um, further problems. Now for me, structural drawing gets fun when it gets organic. So if I'm drawing a tree or a tree branch, right, I can kind of track the, the 
where the branch is going to go. Send some branches off. Find, you know, intersect with the main part of a trunk. And then I can start to use my concepts of cylinders and make them interact. Like I can make this, this tree into a cylinder, an organic cylinder. And then I can have it branch off into further cylinders and I can put a cylinder in front and make it all kind of come out towards me. And I can wrap lines every so often in order to make that change direction. So let's say this one goes back in space. I can wrap lines the opposite direction to sort of make that go off and uh, go off and away. And then I can change it and I can use that concept over and over and over to make interesting organic forms. And I can connect that to here, make a large branch go up this way, you know, the main part of the trunk, I can just bring down like that, and so on. Um, and the same thing goes with um, really any other type of form. You can take a sphere form and turn it into uh, a head pretty quickly. And you can make somebody kind of, um, you know, look down in space with uh, with this kind of form. And you can begin to evolve these these basic forms into more advanced things pretty quickly. Um, you can take box forms and make them organic too. Like you could think of the head as as a box form as well. You could box it out. Sometimes people really have sort of squared off heads and you can take advantage of that and, you know, build a boxier head, right? You can put eyes, nose, mouth on it and you've got um, a sort of box form head that you can then further adapt into something, right? And you can round out those sorts of planes if you need to. Um, the other thing too is you can take a box form and even just kind of rounding rounding out the edges, you can make something pretty interesting happen. So a lot of machined objects do have rounded boxy edges. Um, and that's just kind of good to keep in your back pocket. You know, for forms like, um, you know, feet or something like that, you can think of the foot as kind of having this kind of ground plane and being sort of like a wedge, right? So the foot can kind of develop like this, which is kind of row body, but it can kind of work if you make it a little more, if you make it a little more organic, give it an ankle bone and a heel and so on. You can then build out toes or whatever you need to do to make this sort of form begin to work. And then organic forms get really fun when you talk about um, doing things like um, improving, you know, eyeballs, right? So everybody wants to draw eyes like, like this and sort of begin with the sort of eye structure, right? And work your way out into the outer anatomy after that. Um, but instead, you could work it the other direction and say, well, the eye I know is a sphere, right? And I want to make that eye look off to the right so I can place a couple of, of uh, ellipses on that sphere looking off to the right. And then I can begin my eye over here and I can make it look in that direction. And I can put the nose in around that. So that I think is where um, forms get interesting. And I think um, our structural drawing is kind of what's going to underpin a lot of what we do in, in like an intermediate drawing class. You know, because where we're going with that is we're going to do some more advanced forms. Um, we're going to talk about forms like, um, you know, prismatic forms, like triangular, triangular forms. 
Um, we're going to talk, we're going to do a whole unit just on eggs, which you're going to hate life for a little while, but egg forms are, are kind of essential, um, to, uh, to kind of your drawing, drawing repertoire because they're not very forgiving. Um, and that they tend to improve your drawing skill greatly once you kind of master the egg form. We'll do things like, um, uh, triangular pyramid structures you know, and talk about how to do forms like that. We'll do maybe some rectangular pyramid structures um, and talk about how to just kind of go directly to these more advanced forms without kind of breaking them down from their component parts. Um, and then we'll talk about ways to um, to begin to stack and overlap and, and embellish forms um, as well. So that that should be it on uh, on a review of structural drawing and if you need more detail there are plenty of videos on the YouTube channel already